Okay, we are ready to build this robot. And I have Adriel here. He's going to help me do this today for our video. Yeah. First thing we did is set everything up. I, I'm doing this on my uh, dining room table because I have a little more space. And I separated all the parts out. Box two, uh, box one, or sorry, box two with my electronics and my gear and my claw. I didn't really need that. I'm just kind of setting that aside. I'll come back to that at the end. But everything else is all separated by piece. I have my instructions here. And that's me. The I other did. thing I did is I put my battery on the charger and my joystick on the charger for both of those to start charging while I'm doing this process. On the first page and kind of all the pages, I take the screw and set it right on the picture to make sure I have the right size. And then basically what we're doing here is we're putting the uh, retainer, the bearing, the black thing in there. And the thing is to count the holes, one, two, three, four. So like on the picture, this is showing that it's in the fourth hole. And then we're going to take the screw in and put it from the top. Yeah, that's right. And the black bearing it's has the uh, metal hex nut in, inside it. So once again, be sure this is on the fourth hole, one, two, three, four. And then this crossbar that's like this? going across. Like this? Yep. So Adriel just got the next one going up on the fourth hole. I'm the best. And then right here, you want to make sure that this flap is facing inside. Do I have to get one of these? the brain is going to hook here, it has to be just right. And then the other one is going to be over on the other side here. Five. Six. six. Yep. So six spot from the back is where the other black square goes for the right here? back side. Right here? Yep. Let's make, oh, no, I think you went too far. It's got to be the six, the six hole along that center line. Like this? Okay, we have the very base frame here. And again, it's just real important that these are the right one, two, three, four holes in. Six holes in. That's my family in the background. And then that these um, ledges are facing inside to each other. Okay, this everybody be quiet. has to be just right for the brain. Okay, this is step three. Now we have that finished. One thing that you might want to do, can I borrow this a second? Is go through and tighten all the screws right now. Do you want to go ahead and show them? Tightening the screw? Tighten these screws? Yep, so you can put sure. it like this. But actually, if you go in this way, and you can get it a little bit tighter. So you put it in, and one trick to do is to put pressure, be kind of pushing down into the screw and turning at the same time. And if you tighten everything up now, there you go, you got it, and then turn. Perfect, perfect, that was tight. I Next, thought it was for step bend. four, it, it's not very clear in the directions, but you actually just flip this over, and now you're gonna be working with it upside down for step four. For step four here, one thing you want to notice, yeah, let's look at it closely here, is that this one, the, the screw is in the third hole on the top. Yep, the screw is in the third hole, and then this little post is in the second hole, and then the fourth hole here is actually a hole. That's what our shaft is going to go through. So that's the case on both of these sides. Yep, that's where it is, Bill. Step five was just setting up kind of on the opposite side. So you'll see that there's a hole that the shafts are gonna go through right here. They should line up nicely in that stream. In 15 spots. minutes. And then for step six, you wanna make sure you get your parts because these are some new parts now. This is a different kind of bearing, um, a shaft collar, that's a rubber shaft collar. And then make sure you have the correct shaft by lining it up on your picture to make sure that it's the exact right, exact, exact same. So you're gonna gather these parts twice, step six, seven, and eight eight kind of go together. So you gather these parts and then you're gonna kind of set them in place and then add the motor in step seven. And the, putting the motor in will tighten everything down. So this just shows it kind of resting in place until I put the motor in. And it's in the fourth hole, the shaft goes through the fourth motor. hole. And I'm kind of on motor? the other end I was working at before and that's the motor. So the age I just went and got the motor, that's gonna be the next step. A little bit of a trick to get the motors in place here. But it's, you're using the blue screw, make sure that you line it up that you're using the correct screw and you can send the tool through that other hole like Adriel is to reach the screw and then the screw is going in the motor here. Stop calling my name. And then the last part, the shaft is going, can you move your thumb there? The shaft is going into the motor and then the screw right here. And then we're just gonna have to hold it in place and screw it tightly. And then the longer blue screw in step eight is gonna go in that middle hole. Okay, here is step eight, finished it up. So a couple things to note is you wanna make sure you have the correct spacer. 
And you can tell that by putting your spacer on the picture to make sure you have the right size. Because that goes right here and it's separating the, um, the two pieces of metal. If you have the wrong size spacer, it'll squish the metal. It won't line up properly. The other thing I did is make sure my shaft was all the way in the motor. And, um, and then I tightened this rubber shaft collar back up to the end so that it won't come out very easily. It'll stay in. Lastly, I was having a little trouble getting my screw all the way in. You can back it out and re-put it in to do the best you can, but don't force it. It's it's in there. It's not going anywhere. It's totally tight. Okay. So if it doesn't go all the way in, that's okay. Just do the best. What does this remote do? Great. What is this? Okay, now I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Okay, I am on to step, let's see, 12, where you put the inserts 11. in the wheels. Okay. Well, we already did a lot, step 11. So the inserts, where did that insert go from the beginning? Mm -hmm. So this insert is going in the wheel. Hmm. And if you have a little hammer, you can hammer it down. And remember, I just tried using my roll of tape. And I kind of actually got it in. You're trying to get it all the way in, that wheel insert. And, and don't you're break do it. it. On, um, both sides of this wheel and the other wheel. So there should be four total. Okay, so the order goes spacer, right here, this size spacer, and then you put the wheel on, perfect. Push it down in there. Careful, watch that it's, it's poking out from the other side. That doesn't hit you. Easier said than done. Put that on, huh? it might take two minutes. You gotta go on perfectly straight. Make sure it's lined up in there. There we go. And then spacer, or rubber shaft collar, sorry. And you put it this way? You want to put two of them. Yep, put that one, and then put that one to tight, push it in all the way tight. In the picture, it's showing like that maybe there's one more thing right here, but that is that wheel insert that we already hammered into the wheel. That's what this part is. So it just goes spacer, wheel, and then the two rubber shaft colors. Okay, moving on to the last two wheels. Again, they needed the wheel insert. I found that, at, oh, can I show you uh, this? That's okay. This one didn't seem to work as well with the tape, but if we use this little extra spacer and put it on there, Adriel, don't get, just go gentle. It doesn't take a lot. And then they use the tape as a hammer. Did that get it in there? Yeah. That just helps give it a little more pressure and get it down there. A little harder. There we go. I can feel it got in there. Yep. Perfect. Then we'll yeah. Okay. I'm on step kind of 15 and 16, putting on those other wheels. Again, you want to make sure you have the right shaft, and the right, the right shaft collars. And over here, I did this one already. So I'm putting one, this was step 14, actually putting the rubber shaft collar on the shaft in between these two. And then there's that spacer there, the wheel, and then two rubber shaft collars on the other side. Again, the picture shows this extra thing, but that's the wheel insert that we already hammered into the wheel. So we're gonna do this setup on both wheels. Okay, so I've got all four wheels on now. Believe it or not, we've been doing this. We're still upside down. And that was kind of through step 17, getting all the wheels on. Then step 18 is to put the battery clips on. And I turn my robot around, so I'm facing the other way. The battery clips are gonna go right in here in um, the spots and again we're going to count them out i'll count them out in a minute and show you what i have them on where's the do we have a battery clip huh don't think we've opened that pile up yet that might be in, it was in the bottom of box two actually okay. it's in this little bag right here these are the battery clips okay here's the battery clips so from the, the left side here there's one hole and then it was in the second hole and then there was nine in between, and then it came over here. And the way to figure that out, one, two, three, four, is the fifth one from this side. Or sometimes these notches are helpful. Well, there's the notch, one, and then one more. And the battery clip goes across. What? The How screws are coming clip? up from underneath. Oh my gosh. Everything keeps clipping. Okay, we're on step 19 now doing the antenna. And the antenna, you're putting it in on upside down, so it kind of doesn't really fit very well, but we're going to flip it over in a minute and it will fit. And it doesn't really actually matter which notch it's on. This is one that doesn't matter. In between these two wheels somewhere, you can see that Adriel's doing the screw through the holes. That's one of the beauties of this little tool. That's and so we'll put two screws in. Okay, now we're ready to place the brain. Again, we're still upside down, so we're putting this upside down. The one thing to note is that on um, this side, See if I can get enough light in there. It has the battery spot where the battery connects. And that one, you need to make sure there's enough room. So if you can kind of center it exactly or center it a or push it a little bit so that the battery side has a little more room. 
And then there's these holes. Can you lift it up to show that hole? There's some holes right here. You're going to line those up with those holes and then pop in the white um, inserts. I forgot the name. <laughs> anyway, though, you're going to just put like three on each side. It doesn't really matter where. Just center them out. This is one of those things that is not so picky. Okay, I just looked at the instructions. I guess we actually only needed four. So we put two on this side and two on the other side. And sometimes you have to kind of just wiggle this up and down a little bit to get the holes to line up exact. And they don't have to be totally tight in. There's actually a little gap that allows you to pull them back out when you want to move the uh, braid. Okay, guys, we're just about done. It's so exciting. I'm going to flip the robot over, and then we're going to start plugging everything in. Oh, Oops, okay. forgot the battery before we flip it over. So I've been charging my battery this whole time. It was perfect timing because if I press that power button, I have four lights. That means we have four spots on it. So the battery gets plugged in on one right there, and then the other end into the battery. Battery. And then after it's plugged in, you just kind of wrap this cord, tuck it back in there a little bit, and then snap it in place in your battery clips. I like, it doesn't matter which way it goes, but I like it this way so that you can see how much battery power you have left at any time. Okay, if you're looking on, we're gonna plug in everything now. On the top of the brain, you can see these slots are all numbered. One through 10. And we're going to plug it in in a certain way because that's how the joystick works automatically. You can use anything and program it. Okay, this one is one. So put one in here and then one. The motors are a little bit crisscrossed actually, the way I put my brain in. So one is that one and then one is going to be the right motor. And then 10 and uh, the left motor, the other side. Underneath where the motors are connected with the... Uh, little connectors and they should light up red once everything is working and again up top it's kind of this crisscross criss criss situation this one is motor one and this one is motor 10 it's shown that way on page 15 in the book step 22. okay the last thing we're going to do is the antenna and the antenna goes in slot six slot what? six do this i put this right here slot four do you see slot four can you find slot six I put it right here. That's four, though. Do you see where six is? There you go. And then that is going to cl plug into the bottom of the antenna. And you can send it right down through through the, um, I flip the robot it. there. And then flip it over and put it in spot. Right here? And then we're going to talk about driving. Okay, the last step is to pair the joystick, which I just got off the charger, charger with the brain. This is a one-time process. Um, that once you do this and there's no other joysticks at your house, you won't have to do it again. So you're going to take one of the other cords, plug it in here, it doesn't really matter, A to B, and you plug it in over here in any slot, you turn everything on, and it should show on the screen this little connection. Uh, can you move that out of the way, please? That the, they, they're, con they're pairing like this. And that just shows that those guys are paired up. And then you can take this cord and put it away. And then the last step before we start driving we have to is to clean away? up all these pieces. I'm going to put all the little pieces back in a Ziploc bag, save them back in my box. I'm going to save both of my boxes so that I'm ready when it's time to build the cloth. 